Charlie Van here with Roger Christian, Academy Award winner, worked on Star Wars, second unit director on Phantom Menace, uh, set decorator on New Hope, the list goes on and goes on. How was it working on Star Wars? Um, it was hard work. <laughs> and uh, the first one was, uh, it was very interesting for me because it was the kind of philosophy I'd always had that spacecraft guns should be real and not plastic. And uh, Pops wouldn't finance the film, so George and I, only five of us, worked for four months to develop how to make the film, because we didn't have enough money to make it with, basically. So I had to invent a cinema system using scrap metal from old aeroplanes and things, so I could afford to do the dressing, and it also gave that old look, used look, which was the first time, really, in cinema that that had been done. So. And it was very tough, I have to say, that the British crews didn't like George, they didn't like the film, they thought it was science fiction rubbish, and science fiction at that stage wasn't very popular, so um, I stuck by George's side, I never left. How did you get involved with Star Wars? I was doing, I was in Mexico on a film called Lucky Lady, and we were doing some really real sets, they were in the rum running period in, in America in the 20s, and uh, the writers told George and he came, flew down, Gary Kurtz and George Lucas flew down and interviewed me and John Barry, the designer, and hired us straight away. And they said to him, if you go to um, UK and make the film, it was half the price then of America. And that way, with a budget, we only had $4 million to start with, and that, he could do it for that. So that's how we came on board. What was it like working side by side with George Lucas? Creativity runs all over him. Well, I think we, I was lucky because I, I, I'd say we are like students together at that stage and, and George had been an indie filmmaker and he's still an indie filmmaker to this day. He still works that way. He's very quiet and focused and understands how to get the stuff up on the screen and understands how to do it when you don't have that much money, in fact. And even now, they did a, I remember the producer telling me when we did... Phantom Menace, he worked out the cost. He thought it would be about 400 million if he'd done it through the studio system and it was done for 100. So it's still the same mentality. Speaking of students, Maeve's coming around, so a lot of graduate students at film school. What's your advice for those that are going to be going out into the industry? I, I have an advice, and I went back to the film school in Britain, and it's um, don't let anyone tell you you can't do it, because you can. There's no schooling way or anything can teach you how to do it. You've just got to do it. And I always say as well, and I told all the students this, if, you're, if there's a brick wall and you've climbed up the brick wall and you've slid down and you've got your bones are showing through your fingers and somebody's kicking you in the bit ribs with, with big heavy boots on and you go, you know what, I'm getting over that wall, you'll make it. Because it, it's quite tough. But um, you just got to do it, and don't let anyone ever tell you you can't do anything, because you can. Finally, take me back to when you won the Academy Award. That was a surprise, honestly, because, and still now to this day, a science fiction film has never won an Academy Award as a film, which I think is really bad. Even this year, Avatar, I thought, finally, we're going to get a film and break this prejudice against science fiction, and it didn't win. So we honestly did not expect to win. I was shocked when they called our names out. And we kind of all, we went up on the stage and I was, we were a bit embarrassed. All the special effects, there were eight of them and they were thanking their dog and their god and their aunts and their uncles. And we said, you know what, John, you just say something for all of us. And John Barry was a designer. And John summed it up. He looked at George Lucas in the front row and he said, you know, every single frame of this film belongs to that man down there. And that was because we kind of had a sense George wouldn't get up there. Well, thank you for your time.